G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to be doing another round of power rankings, this time ahead of round eight of the 2024 season. At the moment, I'm doing these pretty much every week. Um, so let me know in the comments if you think that's too often. I don't think once a week is too often, considering, you know, there's so many pages out there like Fox Woody do their power rankings once a week. I used to do them every three to five rounds. Let me know in the comments what there is an appetite for. But either way, I think doing it week to week means you should make them shorter videos. And as a result, you know, we're starting to learn a little bit more about teams. And uh, therefore, there's some movement this week, but not a whole heap. So I'll rattle through it fairly efficiently. So we're going to start with the bottom three. That is unchanged. North Melbourne anchored to the bottom of the ladder and the rankings, rather, uh, with a big loss to the Adelaide Crows. Disappointing result. They, they would have loved to have gotten closer, I am sure. Uh, and therefore, they can't leap ahead of Hawthorne and Richmond, who both sustained fairly heavy defeats. But at the same time, um, you know, nothing really new there. So Richmond and Hawthorne, again, could we see that change fairly soon, soon, the order between those two sides? Potentially. But at the moment, I've got it just that as is, considering Richmond have a win over Sydney under their belt. So the next couple of teams, I have switched the order around. I have now West Coast back into my red zone, and I have Adelaide in orange. It was the other way around, and I had them both orange last week. I'm happy to relegate West Coast now back into the red zone. Um, and the red zone just means you can't really see them play in finals. Adelaide kind of still, because we know that they're a good team, or they were a good team last year, a decent side, finals quality in my opinion, um, they still got a small sniff, but obviously they're behind the eight ball, but still in the finals mix, but they're kind of in that group where if they keep losing, um, you're probably going to find yourselves in the red zone. So that's my separation between those two sides. West Coast, you know, pretty disappointing against Gold Coast Suns, like 37 point loss, but I think statistically showed a big gap between those two sides on quality and therefore they're restored back into the bottom four, but still clearly ahead of the bottom three teams. I've got St Kilda and Gold Coast in the same order as I did last week. St Kilda, you know, went down by 10 points to the power. Again, not the most polished performance, I didn't think. They lost by 10 behinds, um, and I think they're struggling at the moment. But the Gold Coast Suns don't quite leapfrog them yet. The Suns have three wins this year over the Crows, Hawks, and West Coast. So for them, it's just about claiming a big scalp. You could easily flip the order of these two teams, but I think it's the lack of scalp that makes me put Gold Coast just a little bit lower, because I think St. Kilda have been a little bit better on the eye test. But like I said, I think this is a genuine form slump. The last three losses have been against decent sides. The Bulldogs, Power, and the Giants, and the Bombers as well. Those are the last uh, four losses, actually. But it was a 10-goal loss to the Western Bulldogs. So I think they're, they're really struggling and then really behind the eight ball in terms of rescuing this season. The next three clump of teams, I found it very hard to separate. And I have these as probably the next three best contenders outside what is my current top eight. And in order, I've got Fremantle, then the Western Bulldogs, then the Brisbane Lions. Now, Fremantle has beaten both of these sides, so they claim top spot there, out of the three teams, that is. Um, but with one outlier performance, which was a terrible Western Derby, uh, where they were well beaten by a West Coast that really came to play. But other than that, their run of form has been solid. You know, wins over the Crows and the Bulldogs in the last five. Their losses against the Blues and the Power, I thought were respectable, considering I have both of those sides in my top six. So on the whole, you know, one bad performance from Fremantle there. They've beaten both of these teams. That's why they claim that spot. The Western Bulldogs have been really up and down. Their most recent loss against Fremantle, you know, it wasn't a terrible loss. I don't think going to Perth and playing Fremantle at Optus is an easy fixture by any stretch. And Fremantle had a point to prove. But, you know, we we're only a couple of weeks removed from them getting smashed by Essendon, which we didn't see coming, at least to that extent. Now, looking at the Lions' last run of five fixtures as well, they've played some good opposition, but I think they've looked disappointing. So they've beaten the Demons and North, and the Demons' win at the MCG is an outstanding win. And the last three losses were against GWS and Collingwood and Geelong at the Gabba. Two of those were at the Gabba. I thought that they have been pretty lackluster, I think it's fair to say. And again, even though Champion Data will tell you they're doing a lot of things right, so I'm sure that's still true, but it's starting to get a little bit out of hand here for the Brisbane Lions. And, you know, suddenly this Q clash this coming week, again, I think could break their season. I tip Gold Coast, I think I'm going to live to regret that. But, you know, I really thought they would be more competitive against the Giants than they eventually were. So now let's talk about our top eight, or my top eight. And I have two sides in the light green zone, and that's Collingwood and Essendon. I've got Collingwood... Uh, in the same spot as I did last week, they have one loss from their last five, one draw and three wins. Those wins are against the Lions, the Power and the Hawks. So a solid run of form there. They're building nicely and just in touch with the top six teams, but not quite in that top group. I know that might be controversial. I've seen Fox Footy had 
the power below Collingwood, and I get it. But at the moment, I, I don't think Collingwood's quite done enough. Yes, they beat them at the MCG, but uh, we'll see uh, with the fullness of time. I think the power have just looked a little bit better. And Essendon uh, rightfully move up a few spots. I cop some criticism for putting them below the Brisbane Lions last week, and I mean, that's fair. And, and again, that didn't age well because the Lions got smashed, and Essendon drew with Collingwood, which I didn't expect. So Essendon sit four wins two losses and a draw, and they've beaten some reasonable opposition there in the Saints and the Dogs most recently, who I think, you know, middle-tier teams at the moment, they're still claiming that legitimacy, and that's why they're not higher, but in terms of consistency, they've been one of the more consistent teams in that bracket, for sure. One bad performance against the power, the rest were pretty passable in my opinion. So now we're into our top six teams, and uh, the boring finish to the video, I've got it in the same order. I don't think I've seen enough to really meaningfully change this order. The power got up narrowly against the Saints. I don't think it was their most polished performance. It almost feels like they're in a slump, but they're still, you know, getting the wins. They're three and two from their last five. Melbourne are four and one with one loss to the Lions in that bracket. Uh, again, the Giants just smashed the Lions, so I don't see them dipping down. I saw Fox Footy had GWS leapfrog Carlton this week, but Carlton beat them seven days previous to that Lions win as well. So I've got that in the same order. Sydney stay in the same spot after a big win over Hawthorne and Geelong undeniably the team to beat this year with a good win over Carlton. So that's my order, guys. Let me know in the comments what changes you would make. Again, I've tried to keep this video fairly concise because of the, you know, the fact that I do this every week. But let me know. Give me some feedback. How often would you like to see this video? I think if we keep it short and concise like this, uh, then I think there might be a place for it. But let me know in the comments what you think, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.